So I'm bringing my queen here because obviously they're looking to attack this pawn. I would love to have saved the knight, but obviously I can't because we'd get um, basically checkmated in a sense because we wouldn't be able to get out of there. So in my brain instantly I'm like thinking, oh let's go here and go there, but obviously that's not going to happen. So simply just taking this off the board, could look to challenge the knight, but really I'm just going to develop this knight out here. So it's a bit of a ball lake now because I'm having to, I'm behind a temple, they're going to castle, so I have to get my bishop out to get castled. So in a sense I'm a bit annoyed at myself for somehow losing tempo in terms of getting my king to safety. There have to be aspects of coming here with that type of thing, you know, putting a check on, so doubling my pawns. Don't mind doubling the pawns so much, but let's just put a smaller piece attack and a higher piece on here. So there's kind of doing stuff to slow me down a little bit. We could keep pressing onto the bishop, but we're losing the tempo to go and castle. And we can't even castle because the bishop's there. So now we have to go and castle on the queen side. So I'm going to bring the bishop here. Looks like this opponent really knows about just stopping people from attacking or going for uh, queenside castling or whatever it is i'm trying to do on a positive sphere they seem to be one step ahead which we're usually one step ahead um we've got pieces out we might not need to whinge so much we potentially still can get the queenside castle in but miraculously as we've been talking i'm just feeling that i'm a i'm behind in development i mean i could just push my king here i don't have to castle so what's the opponent really got i mean this pawn's doing a nice job stopping this here bishop's a little bit jammed in let's look at the positive side of things so now they're looking to double up so it gives us time to actually go and castle queen side so they've doubled but it really it's hitting thin air in, in my eyes it's um, not a good doubling up but it's doubled anyway so it's using the power of those rooks so it's annoying we're, we're, we are behind in terms of development of our pieces how did this happen I'm gonna x-ray through to their rook I needed to try and find some way of gaining some tempo back somehow we do have a tempo win here with the pawn, but I'm saving that just to see if I can readjust. I don't know if I'll get away with this because this bishop will come in here and x-ray through to the king. So we, won't, we can't really double on that side. So we could maybe just bring the bishop here looking to attack and then it's a simple take, take fest with the rooks. So that's what I'm kind of thinking. Oh, he's blocked. He's blocked. So we could go here. If he then comes here, then we can take the bishop off the board. So it gives us a moment where we can go and actually double the rooks. Can't do that because obviously there's nothing supporting. But if we did bring this rook here, what are they thinking of doing with the bishop? We'll move the bishop back again. So we kind of win a tempo chase in the knight. But where are we sending the knight to? It could go back. It's not going to go. Can't go there. It's not going to go there. And it's not going to go here. So it has to go back. So we're probably sending them back a bit if we do that. So I'm trying to win some sort of initiative. I'm trying to win all these concepts that we're talking about. We know we're behind. And it's annoying because somehow. We've done everything normal. I'm gonna to have to look at the evaluation on this just to see what happened in the opening part. But now we're trying to get a redress into the situation to try and win some sort of tempo back, as we've explained. They may beat us to the punch and they may move the knight already just to get it out of the way of the fork, or they might move the bishop, whichever. So those are my real thoughts in playing this playing this particular game. It's um most of the time it is the annoyance factor that comes in. So he's grabbed a pawn. He's grabbed a pawn. Still gonna push on to the knight anyway. 
It may come here just for a simple exchange rather than going backwards. But if it does that, we can get the rook off the board. Does his bit? Oh, his bishop's probably going to come here. Yeah. No, it's not. Okay, so we get the knight. He gets our bishop. Is there something else? It's not a straightforward rook can come and attack their bishop as well. No, this is not a it's not a good thing. Take, takes, take. Looking to get promotion, but that ain't happening. The pawn just drops. Well, not to there because the bishop will take, so it just drops to here. Bishop moves to attack the rook. Oh, we'd get the rook, wouldn't we? Don't know if it's going to play out like that, but we will take. So they actually take. So we're going to x ray through to the um, king from the rook. So, in essence, winning the rook, but the bishop is going to come put a check on our king. His rook still can't come and actually take, but we'll have to move our king out of the way. So it's all going to get a little bit scrappy. I've done that a bit previous because I was going to take this pawn, but I was thinking, am I going to lose the impetus of this? Because I think they probably would have just taken with a check on the king. So this is coming. Move the king. Take the rook off the board with the bishop or with the rook. It's way over the bishop. Oh, mind you, we lose the bishop anyway, don't we, as well? Hmm. No, that's not good now. I'm just thinking because he's got two pieces protecting. So I suppose, yeah, he's still going to have more pieces than us, isn't he? Because he's one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We take, his rook takes, our rook takes, his king takes. Well, they're not, it's not going to happen, is it? We take the rook, his rook takes. So then there's, they've got a rook, we've got a rook. They've got two bishops. What am I missing here? Bishop comes, we move. Bishop attacks maybe. I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do, but I can see this one happening. If we did take, then he takes back. That's right, we've got two rooks and a knight. They've got a rook and two bishops. So if we take the rook, then the king takes. Then we've got a rook and a knight against two bishops. Right, okay. Finally got there. This is what happens in the over the board games where my brain's just flashing all over the place. Just going from a one two calculation. Basically. Oh, we said that was the one coming. So we'll just do that. And we'll take the rook off the board. Also attacking this pawn as well, but I think we'll just maybe just take this off the board. Pawn takes. Have the rooks in a nicest position. I mean, this bishop's not well. It's not trapped because it can come here and it can start wreaking some havoc. So a brief moment. Feel like we're gaining the initiative back. But I'm still not really comfortable with how my rooks are. They've got a nice bishop that can block stuff off. We can still take this pawn just to get that out of the way. So if this does happen, 
he's gonna want to line up his pawns coming towards the end game so they take then we take this pawn here then obviously his rook comes to where I'm attack the pawn and this is where I'm like I'm not happy with the way my rooks are because I can't get in so I'm gonna to have to play some sort of attempt at doubling up and doubling here or bringing this one and doubling here but the pawn is in front so it's going to be blocked so it's probably better on this side all depends what they do but I think obviously they're going to leave the bishop as it is this bishop's going to do something maybe just to entice the knight to make a move <laughs> exactly <laughs> all right so we're going to take pawn takes take this pawn yeah take this pawn then the rook comes across and defends like i said i think it's probably better coming on to this one i'm gonna just go go here go here there's no point in doubling here because he's just going to drop the pawn so he does take so just bring this here you can easily just drop the pawn down so this one is like there's nothing here got us as plus one at the moment but that's probably just the difference between the rook and the bishop one two three four five six one two three four five okay they've got more pawns than us um put a check on it's coming down for the pawn i don't really want to be on any white squares Ooh, it's not on the back but then it's going to come back here again then come here so if we go there it's going to go there then it's going to come here if we defend here his bishop's going to come and attack here I'm going to offer a draw see what they say could push here just for a non-move it's coming down for our pawn we come up starts tantalizing Mm -mm -mm. oh he declined oh that means we're finished we're done for I can't find anything let me see let me see let's push this up and just sit here get the king up slow drawn out process let's go there now we're on a white square so we have to be careful he's not going to do any of that may come here for some strange reason yeah because if he does that then i suppose in a way he do takes and if we take back no it's not doing any of that so he's got all this protected around here i cannot think of a way of getting up there 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 then he hides in here then my rooks are just up there doing nothing move the king so it's off of the diagonal now from the bishop this is on a white square we have to be very mindful of that what's the tricks This pawn doesn't have any protection on, so we could swing here. Drops this pawn to protect, then we can bounce back up again. Let's attack this pawn. Protects. Bounce back up again. He continue with this because he wants the bishop to be here oh yeah that's a nice plan isn't it nice little plan this was always going to be hit damn so he pushes down we take bishop takes bring the rook across attacking the bishop
Push it goes back. Rook can take. Okay, he's not doing it just yet. He's making space, trying to make space for his king, isn't he? Although we. Hmm. We take. There's nothing following on from that. It is protecting this pawn. Interesting. We have to be so careful. I mean, this pawn here is going to cause us some trouble, but I think maybe it's lucky the rook king's there. If it does drop, and if we do take, and if the bishop takes, then we do have the pin through onto the king. So then we'll be able to get the bishop off the board. But now we can't because he's bringing this down here to sort that out. So there's elements of try attempting to maybe come around the back. But I'm trying to revert from doing that. Got a check on. King comes back. Bring this rook up. You can always get to hide around here, can't you? Hmm, okay. I have nothing else at the moment, so it's position and checks first. And as we mentioned, could come up. But yeah, it's going to hide in here. So there's. Hmm. If he hides in there, we can jump here. If we went up, then he takes the pawn. We put a check on. He hides in here. We push this pawn up. He moves across. Or should I just attack this pawn? So that then there's a distribution taking here. So if we go up, he takes this pawn. Ooh, gotta be careful. He's got line of sight with the bishop and the, the rook here. And if we, we're not putting any checks on him, he's going to get that and then get that. And then we're having to run. Oh, so there's method in his madness. So if we push this pawn, in readiness for stopping the king from moving to here at least. He's still got sights of doing this, hasn't he? But we can still do that at the moment. So I'm gonna if we do yeah okay push this if he pushes down makes more space around his king. Less places for them to hide. That's a good job we talked it through. Yeah, that's a demon move. That's what they're waiting for. That's their pattern of attack. It's changing it now. It's stopping the rook from actually putting a check here. 
rook could go and attack the bishop. Rook could come and attack the pawn, but this time the bishop's going to come here on the inside. So if we push this pawn up in readiness for that, then at least. Could come here, goes there. Don't think that's going to be worth it. I think pushing this pawn. Pushing this pawn. If he does go here. Mind you, they can just take the pawn, can't they? Do 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 do. So we attack, brings the bishop here, blocking off the activity. Because hmm. even if we went to attack it, he would just do that. Interesting times. So in essence, we're not going to get anything, are we? So goes there, the king comes up, and if we went and did that, same thing happens again whereby the rook takes and they're on the pawn here but let's then the rook can come back and put a check on the king so he's got choices then going here to make his way back over to here Hmm. One. Two. Three. Maybe he goes in here. Too late to the party because rook check there. And if he does that, then boom, check and mate. I don't think it's going to pan out like that though, is it? Okay, I think that was a four stepper. I'm going to take the chance. One, one, so that's one. Two. Oh, it's dropped it down anyway, so the king's not even going down there. That's a horse of a different colour, isn't it? Just cut off the king's access. Also attacking the pawn. Bishop comes this way or this way. Probably this way because it's like blocking the rook from getting involved. But it does take it away from attacking this pawn. So you'd think it'd probably keep this so that it could get this in at some stage. So down. Say to keep that. Okay, let's just go there. Then we push the pawn. They might go. No, it's time to actually take this pawn and um, push this pawn down. Yeah, uh, because uh, they might be feeling a bit better about the position. Let me look at that. Tack. The pawn. Okay, maybe still defends. Push the pawn. Maybe he goes, well, I've had enough of that now. Let's get the pawn forward. So the bishop's behind. It's blocking the pawn. Go 
don't know if they'll do that, but um, if the rook comes here, then he's got options of attacking the rook. This pawn will be blocking the bishop, so we could take this, but I don't think we'd do, yeah, but it'd be attacking the rook, so we'd have to do something with the rook. Hmm. It all looks a little bit too. I'm going to attack the pawn. Again, I'm trying to gain some type of initiative. I do know, we do know this is their strength, this bit here. He does have this pawn being able to jump down. We can take and we can just position our rook here. So that can work, so that's why I'm not losing too much sleep over that, but got to be mindful, don't want to release protection of this pawn. But at the same time, I don't want to get my rooks trapped from a nice stealthy looking king. He's gone inside. So he's taken himself away from that. So it, to me, it does kind of relieve a little bit of pressure. I'm going to attempt pushing the Oh, and I don't know if this is right or not, but we push the pawn. He can always bring his rook here, but we can then bring the pawn to support. So that's not too bad. Let's push the pawn, because we're looking to entice an attack on the bishop to get it out of the way. But it can sit here, still protecting the, the king with this square. So it's a bit intricate really. So I did say this was like the real real thought processes that goes, goes through my head. I'm glad to see it see that it's it's not too far removed from my normal calculation type situation anyway. Um there's a lot more emotional content in there as well, you know, the what the heck is going on here basically, do you know what I mean? Come oh, so it's come to if we did this to attack this pawn, what's his magic? He's just going to come back again. Or we can just attack the bishop like we planned to. And if they did take, then obviously the rook can take. And then we're on the bishop, but then the bishop, is he looking? Where is he looking? What's he doing? going to continue with the pawn push onto the bishop because that's what we plan to do he doesn't have to take I mean he can go here but the rook can take the pawn could go here and block the um, rook oh maybe that's what he's doing bishop's just blocking the rook whoa steady on Oh, this is getting more intricate by the minute. Maybe I should be seeing this stuff before I actually make the move. Ah, oh, that's annoying. Oh, yes, yeah, so it's just going to block here. It's making it more difficult for us by the minute. We could go for an attempt at attacking this pawn, but then he can just drop back here. Oh. If he trots back there, well, the key one of the things is, I mean, there if he goes there, the rook can't go there when the king's there. But if the king did drop back here, if we went to attack, he's actually attacking our rook, so we have to move the rook. Ah, shabby times. Ah, oh, blocker. He's not going for the blocker. But he's still protecting the damn pawn. Oh, come on. And he's also defending against the rook coming here. Oh, dearie me. Nah, that's this. That's too. That's too much. Can't push any further up. The rook's just going to go up and get the pawn. Rook could come here. Because now he doesn't have the double threat. He, we could give him that pawn. So 
if we went up then if they took then we can start putting some sort of checks on the king for a bit don't know if it's any good uh, we don't want him coming down here so maybe this one comes and puts a check on or does he mobilize his bishop beforehand by putting it here and then we can't actually put any checks on oh that'll be annoying won't it so we've come all the way up here but then if he did mobilize we can take the pawn off the board going to go with that and see what happens expecting this and then maybe a little bit of this moves backwards and forwards he can't come down here and oh, that might be did I see a checkmate no it's not a checkmate he just goes backwards and forwards I was thinking if he went there then he can't go anywhere else but he can just keep going backwards and forwards I did set off for a draw because he's not going to go anywhere else so it's a draw I'm, I'm happy with a draw unless there's something that I'm missing and I missed a golden opportunity but I don't think there is in this particular game You can't go up here, you can't go down there, so it's a draw. Thank you very much. Have a look at the analysis. Let's do a report. Let's have a look and see how the performance was. 6 inaccuracies, no mistakes, 2 blunders, 87% performance for myself. Five inaccuracies, one mistake, one blunder, and 88% accuracy for our opponent. So they had a higher accuracy um, type uh, performance, which is surreal because at the end of the day, it was a draw. Felt like we were a bit muddled in the beginning of the game. So let's have a look at what transpired. Okay, so we jumped out with the night stuff and we were doing a, a lot of talking um, while we were doing this sort of manoeuvres so it was almost like knee-jerk reaction type things nice and steadily away and at some point we kind of realised that we felt like we were behind in tempo building and we kind of lost the initiative so we captured, captured, and then they brought the queen down we captured the knight which again I would do again they brought the bishop down and brought the queen up so at this point here um, I think we were questioning whether we were behind here or not but it still feels okay so we captured captured so this is fine so far I think it was the castle in aspect because looking at the current state of affairs their king could castle before our our king so in essence felt like we were we've lost a bit of tempo and, and the initiative in terms of working our pieces together and establishing some sort of attack formation and the strategy just didn't look like we were in time at all and then they brought the bishop through so that gave us a bit of a moment to put a smaller piece against their their piece so it gave us a bit of a movement in time and then we kind of realized that well basically this bishop is blocking our king from castling so um we're going to have to fashion some sort of way of castling on the queen side if we can if not we'll just sit the king or you know onto a square somewhere like here or something like that so we brought the bishop through and now they're looking to double and we had a little panic on thinking well they're gonna get double before us etc but at least we've got our bishops out and we've got castled and our rooks were linked up gauge bar seems to be on our side here which i'm finding quite surprising and then they go for the doubling and it's given us more advantage and I'm there going well they've, they've doubled they're actually winning um, but you know we we searched for the position we went for basically an attack towards their um, rook so we're trying to win that initiative back 
So I think this was the starter for 10 for us in terms of, okay, let's target some key areas, target some key pieces, put some pressure on the opponent a little bit to try and get some redress in what we believed was a bad position on the board. So then they brought the bishop back. And I think we did say in this, in that when that move happened was that that might have given us a little bit of in and in into the game because it's taken away the power base of the two rooks having ownership of the file completely. We did have a bit of a focal point then on this pawn pushing onto either the knight or the bishop if the rook comes across and supports. So we believe that might be giving us a, win, a bit of a tempo win, but we'll see what the computer says. So we'll bring the rook through, it's not too detrimental at all. And then they go greedy munching. And we're always fairly comfortable with people greedy munching so long as it doesn't improve their position. And I think we did say something along the lines of, well, does it kind of improve their position? Um, they have taken a pawn and still not happy with our position, I think as we were saying, but it felt a lot better in terms of, okay, well, their bishop is on the other side of the board. What are they realistically going to do with that? But we need to jostle our pieces to get a better position. So we still go ahead and target the knight because behind the knight is the rook. So it's almost like having um, an x-ray through to the queen or an x-ray through to the king in this type of position. So they attack our pawn. So, uh, do you know, I'm really quite surprised that the gauge bar has been on our side all the way through the game so far you know it's plus four now so that's really quite interesting to see so we captured the knight i'm just waiting for the massive dip though there must be at some point and so then we bring the bishop through x-ray and through to the king so again another meaty piece of initiative you know being able to take off a higher piece with a lesser piece so the bishop comes as we did expect so we move the king out of the way and then again it brings the bishop again in front of their um, rook so we could take the higher piece off the board it's now showing plus 5.4 well as you know during the game I'm, st I'm still thinking you know we worked all of this out but we want to still improve our position and we did have a struggle around well what am I going to be left with after that exchange but we're left with two rooks. So now we can bring the knight across and attack the bishop. Knights hunt the bishops in our mantra. We're not too bothered about them actually linking the pawns up because at the end of the day we're getting pieces off the board. So they'll be left with a rook and a bishop after eventually calculating it correctly. <laughs> So the bishop attacks the knight, so we take the bishop off the board. So plus 6.4, crikey. There can be no comeback from plus 6 now, can there? Um, unless, of course, I do something majorly bad now. So, we, oh, well, we captured the pawn. It's saying don't capture the pawn at all. Interesting times. Hmm. Oh, look at that magic. Oh, damn. That's beautiful, isn't it? Simple move like that. Oh, and I missed it. I was so, because of the earlier calculations of what we did, you know, as I was talking through, and it says, oh, well, we'll do this, and then we'll take that, and then we'll take this. So no other movements came into my head. I just followed that calculation. And what we've been trying to train ourselves to do is, once we've done a calculation, yeah, but then re-look at the position on the board. It might look different when it's actually in place. This is case in point in that situation. This looked different. So if I had taken my time and stopped myself for a moment, had a look, stopped, looked and listened to the pieces, I wouldn't, I would have seen this, but because I was tunnel visioned on my calculation, my calculation just went, yes, they're going to take here, take there, I'm going to take the ball off the board. And then the rook's going to come across and attack it. That's what we said. So really take time when you're making your moves. Uh, well, especially for myself. So we captured, uh, so it dropped and it's plus two. So we're not losing per se. 
and we did have our own calculation for this process in a sense we were feeling more comfortable and basically saying now we're best off just um, getting the rooks lined up here to maybe put some pressure on the king this way so it's plus point plus one so we're not losing we're feeling fairly okay this rook move we did see that it's got potential to come down maybe start putting some pressure on the king so putting pressure on their king first seeing whether or not we can get around the back giving the king a flight square uh, the impending doom is coming towards us so the rook attacks the pawn we'll bring the rook up and defend nice and simple and bring the king up and they're pushing their pawn down so at this moment i think i don't know if it was this moment or it might have been a bit later on when we realized that oh they've got this situation going on here you know if we start getting a bit funky with the rooks and start moving them up putting checks on and stuff like that once we run out of those checks they do have that kablam move so we bring the rook back attacking a piece that's unprotected and we capture and then we bring the rook back again and look to put some pressure towards around their back end and put a check on the king and look to block off the actual king's transition to this square and the bishop's now getting a bit lively and then they block off um I, like i say i don't i thought they were probably going to just go here don't know if that was better or not not really sure does it oh it's because i've not got the thing on have i Duh. Oh no, that's given us a. Yeah, so that, that was better for them, although it didn't seem it at the time. But I suppose, in a way, it gave the bishop lots of activity around this area, you know, kind of protecting the king. So we started pushing our pawn, as we said, just to try and disturb the bishop, and we carried on pushing the pawn. Um, it's nice, well, it's nice to see the computer obviously is on our side, but realistically, at the end of the day, um, if it was showing like a minus two or whatever it is then i would pay attention to it um but in the grand scheme of things we were comfortable with this type of um thinking because it was really tight the opponent had a plan you could see their plan now it was starting to get a little bit disheveled but they looked like they were improving the position of their bishop bishop each time but i just wanted to get a feel for if there was any magic for our rook so bringing the rook up here looking to put some sort of check on we know that the rook is going to be greedy munching to get this pawn but because the power base of the bishop is no longer here not too worried because now we can start putting some checks on the king and really looks more drawish than anything else did think at one point there was some sort of checkmate type thing but um i didn't quite see it so saying rook d8 so it's saying there was some sort of fancy business and i just want to see what it is and if it's uh it's pushing the pawn not into any of that rook e d7 it's building something up but i don't know what Bishop e4, I don't really like doing it against the computer, but I just want to see what thinking it had. Rook d6 check. Still looks like it's going to be a draw to me. King c7. e8, d7. King c8. Rook d8 check. That looks like it's still going to be a draw, dude. King c7. Rook a d7 check yeah so <laughs> in any event that position no matter which way you slice it it's going to end up being a draw anyway so really i think they should have just accepted the draw when i put the draw earlier on in the game yeah so happy with that happy with that and the game ended in a draw lovely